Welcome to Concepts NREC's Machine Shop. I'm Dave Emerson. I'm the lead machinist here at Concepts. I've been machining for 12 years, and I've been with Concepts for five of those. We're going to show you some of our capabilities here and give you a walkthrough of our shop. Hello, I'm Josh. I'm a manufacturing engineer here, as well as the lead for the second shift. Uh, as we walk through the shop, we'd like to show you some of our machine capabilities and some of the parts that we do. We are specialists in the turbo machinery industry, as well as active in the aerospace industry. We do parts in the sub-inch range all the way up to 40 inches in diameter. We have a wide range of machinery here, so let's take a look. This is our BTL turning center. We can turn up to a 32 inch diameter part in this giant blade. We have a 25 inch chuck in here that has capabilities of holding very tight tolerances on concentricity. So next up in the box is this 24 inch propeller. So we've done all the blade milling so far. And all that's left is to finish the drive bore. So we have to flip it, bore it, and the main meeting bores so that this can be used as a water pump down the road. This is our Hermley C40. This is relatively medium size for our mills. We are currently milling a medium size shrouded in color out of aluminum. This is an aluminum forging. We pre turn it both sides, leave it stock on to allow for movement, we blade mill it, and then we will bring it over to our lathe the final turn. This is our C42, it's our bigger version of the C40, also a little bit more modern. Uh, this is one of our more versatile machines in the shop, because we can do just about anything in this machine. We typically do parts up to 31 inches in diameter here. We can also switch over and make odd jobs or non completed parts. Right now I'm working on a custom tool for our engineering project for an ongoing um, test. So I'll be able to turn this around tonight and the guys in engineering will be able to use it tomorrow to see if uh, the changes worked. This is our Micron HSM 600U. This is the smallest machining center that we have here at Concepts as far as five axis goes. We currently have a small part coming out of here, a small titanium impeller. This specific part took 40 hours of milling with a 20 thousandths diameter ball end. This machine is also one of our more capable mills here, as it is fully equipped with a seven pallet pallet chain. So we can have multiple jobs set up throughout the week. We can run our proven programs during the evening and do some more complex setups during the day. This is our feeler. This is our medium diameter turning center. It has a 15 inch buck chuck, once again, to hold tight concentricities. It has a long travel with a tail stop. You can do longer parts in this. It also has a 12 tool turret. Right now we're currently doing a nose cone for an impeller that we have already finished and is currently outside getting balanced. When that gets back we will fully assemble it and ship it to the customer. This is our Haas SL20 smallest of our turning centers here at Concepts. It also does some of our most technical turning work. Currently, we have a shrouded impeller set up for final turning. 
This specific impeller has very small labyrinth seals included on the outside shroud. They are 10 thou thick at the tip. And the diameter maintains plus or minus 5 tenths. The nose bore of this holds plus or minus 2 tenths. And that is why we always leave a lot of stock on these, because with all these small, intricate features, we're worried about movement while blading. Over here, I will show you one of the final products. This part is complete and is ready for inspection. So the C42, the C40, and the Micron all use the same interface, HSK63. On this particular machine, you can spin up to 18,000 RPM, which allows us to do uh, a wide range from roughing with a larger end mill to finishing with smaller end mills on our thinner, more intricate parts. I actually have an example to show you. So over here, we have a shrouded whisk. So this part, the thickness of the features here are such where we had to work in stages from the inside out. Roughing, semi-finish, finish, before you can move out onto the next section. We had to do this because of the structural rigidity of the blades. If we tried to rough all at once and then finish all at once, we would have a really bad time trying to hold surface finish on such a thin feature. So we have the tools to use this with uh, our software that we use, MaxPack. Uh, our company actually makes the software and we are uh, experts in using it. So with the tools that we have, we can do really intricate parts such as this tracking plus. So this is the last mill we have to show you. This is the newest machine in our arsenal. It's also a little bit unique. So this is a, our largest diameter up to 1,000 millimeters or 40 inches approximately. It's also a lathe because our vertical turning lathe can only go up to 32 inches where this can go up to 40. So this part behind us came into us as a forging. It's a 15.5 pH stainless steel forging. Uh, it had approximately a quarter inch on all the surfaces so we started off by turning it in this machine in one of our lightweight chucks. It uh, was close to the machine capacity weight limit. Uh, this machine can turn up to 1,000 kilograms or mill up to 2,000 kilograms. Uh, this part here came in approximately 1,200 pounds. We did our rough turn operation, getting it ready for the blade mill. Right now, we are milling out the pockets However, this is a, a tight axis part. It's a shrouded impeller, which means we only have axis from the top and from the sides. So we have to bring our tools and meet in the middle. This being stainless steel and quite large diameter means we're using a high feed milling strategy. So think of it as a really light axial depth cut, but a larger radial width of cut, and moving at very fast speeds to achieve chip fitting on the face of the bed. So this part right here takes quite a long time. And after we get all the blade milling done here, we're going to switch back over to the turning operation and do all the final dimensions to bring it into spec. So the C52 uses an HSK100 interface. This is a dual contact interface which helps with rigidity and accuracy. We typically use heat shrink tooling. Um, it allows us to set up a versatile range of tooling. Um, this right here is going to be my first finishing end mill for the shrouded impeller that we just showed you. Um, after we move through the process and go to turning, got to switch over uh, to an HSK100. So this allows us to lock the spindle with the lathe tool and allows us to do the turning right in inside the middle. So this is our shunk 
uh, Rotoflex 1000. Uh, it is capable of holding up to 1,000 millimeters in diameter, which fits perfectly with our C52. Um, this is a lightweight chuck. You can see the base plate is kind of a triangular shape instead of a full disc. This is as light of a chuck as you can basically get, which allows you to use more of your weight capacity for heavier parts. Here are some of the 3 plus 2 roughing of the shrouded impeller from Marrier. While the high pressure through spindle coolant helps us with tool life and chip evacuation in difficult materials, the subsequent mess really makes it difficult to see through the window sometimes. In this clip, we can see some of the finishing using a strategy called longitudinal passes. This strategy allows us to plunge our finishing tool along the surface parallel to the flow path of the part. This is a commonplace requirement in the turbo machinery industry and we modify the step over between each pass to maintain surface finish and cusp height requirements. Suspended from the crane is the final shrouded impeller. We have completed all milling and turning operations. All that's left is to give it a good clean and remove any remaining burrs. Last stop is into inspection and then off to the customer. This is our inspection department. This is where all of our parts get verified. From blade tolerances, to ODs, to concentricity, true positions, you name it. Our CMM does the majority of that inspection, but we also have a vast array of hand tools in which we do bench gauging. Finally, here are some parts that went through our shop at the same time. These two really show the range of our capabilities. Thank you again for joining us in Concept Center ECE's machine shop.